This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. Hi there everybody and welcome to Animal World. Before you start your visit, I'd just like to tell you about a few special events happening here today. They're all free and I'd really encourage you to go to as many of them as you can, as I think you'll learn a lot. The first event is called the World of Ants and it's happening this morning, quite soon, in the Insect House, which is just a short walk from here. The well-known entomologist, Dr David Crocker, who many of you will have seen on television, is giving a lecture all about ants, the different types of ants, how they organise themselves, what they eat, their behaviour, and so on. It's actually a fascinating subject. So, The World of Ants, a lecture by Dr Crocker in the Insect House, and it starts at 11 o'clock and lasts for 60 minutes. At midday... That's 12 o'clock. There's a film which is just as fascinating, and it's called The Great Migration. This is all about birds and how they migrate across continents and oceans using the sun, the stars, and the Earth's magnetic field. As I said, it's a film, an absolutely spectacular film, which all the family will enjoy. Some fabulous photography, and it's on in Theatre C, which you can see here just behind me. So bear that in mind for 12 o'clock. The next event is a demonstration taking place in the exhibition room and given by Monica Chadder. It's called Encouraging Garden Wildlife. Monica will be showing you ways of encouraging animals, birds and other wildlife to visit and live in your garden. How to place boxes for nests what food to put out for them, and all sorts of practical advice. That's at 2.30, so just after lunch. The final free event for today is Birds of Prey. Tasha, their keeper, will be giving a display of some of our most magnificent birds and how they fly, and I thoroughly recommend this event. The display includes eagles, vultures and owls and will be starting at 3.45 on the lawn outside. It's an unforgettable experience. So remember, on the front lawn at 3.45 to see the birds flying. Now, I'll just give you a few directions before you leave, especially for those of you who are feeling a bit hungry. When you leave the main building, you come to an area where the path divides. If you take the right-hand path, you'll see the lake on your right, and exactly opposite the lake on your left is the gift shop. Apart from selling gifts, it sells snacks, sandwiches and light drinks. Uh, if you walk on past the lake, on your right, you'll also see the penguins. 
Go past the penguins, and you'll come to the restaurant, also on your right. Don't go too far, or you'll come to the aquarium. The aquarium is on your right at the crossroad, and just over the crossroad, also on your right, is the lion enclosure. If you're thinking of having a picnic, the best place to go is the picnic area. And for this, you need to turn left at the crossroad and walk along a few meters. At the end of the path, you'll find the picnic area on your left. Now, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And once again, I really hope you enjoy your visit. Thank you. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You will hear a presenter on a radio show. The presenter is talking to the manager of a local library. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. And welcome back to the programme. Today, I'm talking with Mary Littlejohn from Mere Green Library. As you'll all know, we've sadly been without our local library for the past three months. But the good news is that it's about to open again. Great news, Mary. It certainly is, Jonathan. Despite the fact that money's in short supply, I think visitors will be pleasantly surprised at how different and hopefully better everything is. Fortunately, we didn't need to replace the roof as we'd originally feared. It just needed repairing, so we were left with more money than we expected. We've been able to replace all that old wooden shelving with a more modern style. The computers have been moved to a new designated IT room, and on the subject of technology, Visitors can now order and return books and CDs on their own with our new automated system, so no more queuing to be served. Sadly, money ran out before we had the chance to decorate the meeting room, but we're hoping to complete that next year. Oh, and the children's section now has some colourful new tables and chairs as well. That all sounds fantastic. So, are you having a big reopening party? Well, the doors open on the 28th of August and we'll be serving tea, coffee and sandwiches at 12.30. Then we get down to business in September. The local history society will be meeting on the first Monday of each month at 7.30 as usual and we'll be starting our Wednesday lunchtime book club at 1 o'clock. Both of those events are in the meeting room. 
The Computer Club won't be running in September as we still need to complete work in the IT suite, but this will certainly be returning in October. And we're especially looking forward to welcoming a local writer, Sally Wainwright, to a new event on the 22nd of September. This will be the first of a series of events we're calling Ask the Author. Visitors will be able to hear authors read from their latest works, ask questions, and even buy a copy of their book to take home. Before you hear more of the radio show, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. I might pop along to that one myself. Now, I understand you also have a request. Yes, that's right. We're looking for anyone who has a few spare hours each week who would like to offer their services to the library. Our computer classes have become so popular over the past year that we're thinking about starting a second session and we'll need someone to run it. The current teacher will work with you so you won't be left to sort things out on your own. We can promise the person a warm welcome and a class of very motivated people, many of whom are at quite a high level. We're also trying to do our bit to break down the generation gap, and we've been inviting some of our older citizens in to talk to school groups about the past. The children range in age from 7 to 11. They're always accompanied by their teacher, by the way, but we haven't opened it up to teenagers yet. So if you'd like to help out, please get in touch. Those who've been making use of the mobile library. Yes, because the library has been closed, we've been running a mobile library service and going out to people in the community. Well, feedback has been so positive about this, particularly amongst our elderly users, that we've decided to keep it going. Users can reserve books if the bus doesn't have anything that they feel like borrowing. There's a computer on board with access to the library database, so the librarian will be able to reserve one for you. Unfortunately, we don't stock newspapers or magazines on the bus, as these tend to be for reference purposes only and can't be taken away. We're also pleased to be working with the local council, who've agreed to send someone from the community office on the bus. They'll be able to help you with any local issues you may have. Well, many thanks, Mary. I'm sure our listeners will be delighted to hear the service is fully up and running again. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You'll hear a conversation in a university student services office. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hello, um, I'm Dawn Matthews. Yes, hello. 
I've been referred to you because I'm inquiring about the refresher courses that you run. I'd like to find out a bit more about them. OK. Well, we run quite a few different short courses for students who are either returning to study or studying part-time. Um, tell me about your situation. Well, I think that I really need some help in preparing for the coming semester, uh, especially to build up my confidence a bit and um, help me study effectively, because, you see, I've been out in the workforce for nearly 12 years now, so it really is a long time since I was last a student. <laughs> yes, it can seem like a long time, can't <laughs> it? Um, well, let me start by telling you what courses we have that might suit you. Are you an undergraduate or a postgraduate? Arts or Sciences? Undergraduate, and I'm in the Business Faculty. Right, then. Well, first of all, there's our Intensive Study for Success seminar on the 1st and 2nd of February. Mm -hmm. It's aimed at students like you, who are uncertain about what to expect at college and looks at a fairly wide range of approaches to university learning mm. to motivate you to begin your study and build on your own learning strategies. Mm, that sounds good. Uh, what are some of the strategies that are presented? Well, we try to cover all aspects of study. Some of the strategies in writing, for example, would be improving your planning for writing, organising your thinking and building some techniques to help you write more clearly. With reading, there'll be sessions aimed at getting into the habit of analysing material as you read it mm. and tips to help you record and remember what you've read. It really is very important to begin reading confidently right from the beginning. Mm. There's also advice on how to get the most from your lectures and practice in giving confident presentations, as well as how to prepare for exams. What about the motivational side of things? Ah, well, there's a range of motivational exercises that we do to help the students feel positive and enthusiastic about their study. The process of learning and exploring a subject can lead to a whole new way of looking at the world and the study skills and techniques that you build up can be applied in all sorts of different ways. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Uh, actually, I, um, mm? I'm very excited about the whole thing of taking up studying again, mm. but, you know, I, I'm a little nervous about whether I'll manage to get everything done. Uh, I suppose it's the same for all mature students. Of course it is. <laughs> Two of the key components of the course are time management and overcoming procrastination. People discover that once they learn to plan their days, all the work can be accomplished and there'll still be time for leisure. Is there an enrolment fee? Well, um, oh, just a minute, let's see. Ah, uh, the cost is £30, which includes all course materials and morning tea. You have to arrange your own lunch. Mm, well, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, I already make sandwiches for my three kids and my wife and myself every day. Uh, I won't have to change my routine. No. <laughs> Now, I need to tell you that this is a very popular course and it's essential that you book well ahead of time. In fact, the course convener tells me that there are only five places left. Um, what other course might be good for me? There is one other that you could benefit from. It's simply called Learning Skills for University Study and is on three consecutive mornings starting on a Monday from 9 to 12 and costs £25. Hmm. This is aimed at upgrading the study skills most school leavers have and help them cope with the increased demands of university study. It focuses mainly on making students more responsible for their own success. What sort of things are covered in this course? 
Well, basically, it's more advanced thinking, note taking, reading and writing strategies, but also some input about stress management. Hmm. I think I'd be better off starting from the basics and looking at all the strategies, don't you? Yes. From what you've told me, I think that's more in line with your situation. All right then. Um, can I book a place on the Study for Success seminar course now? Yes. Let me just get out a registration form and take down your details. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4 You will hear a university librarian giving a talk to new students. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. OK, are you all settled? Well, first of all, welcome to Cardiff University. I'm here to explain what we can offer you. Now, as a new student at the university, you will probably need some sort of guidance to help you to use the library effectively to study and research. Some of you have asked about a guided tour but we find this rather muddles people. So in this first week, we run a series of talks which focus on different aspects of the library and its resources. You'll also find that to get the most out of the library, you really do need to be computer literate. And so all this term, we run small classes which will bring you up to speed on how to access the computer loaded information. OK, now let me give you an outline of what's available to you. You'll find that the computers are increasingly used as a research tool. Many students do most of their research on the internet and the library computers are permanently online. Having found what you need, you'll find you can readily save texts on your personal computer space to print off when you need. You might think that it is the fastest way to get information, but the links can be slow. Clearly, you can find lots on there, but much of it is useless information, as it is from highly debatable sources, so be critical. You'll also find that the library has loaded several CD-ROMs onto the computers from specialist reference sources, such as the MLA. It means we can expand what we offer you at very little extra cost and saves us having to invest in more and more books. The CD-ROMs contain exactly the same information as the reference books, as the two are updated together. Now, most of you will need to refer to journal articles in your work, and you'll find you can also access these online, and we encourage you to do so. Clearly, some of you will find the printed version more accessible as it sits on the shelves, but I'm afraid the intention is to phase these out eventually. However, you will still be able to print off a version of the text rather than photocopying the journal pages. So you must get used to working online. Naturally, we do still have the full range of classic reference books, additional to the CD-ROMs for you to use, and there are several copies of each one. This is because some of you may prefer to borrow a book rather than sit in the library. 
There is a restricted loan time on these so that they are not missing from the shelves for too long. Although there is a section manager for each part of the library, they are very busy. And so, if you do get stuck looking for things, you should ask the relevant cataloguing assistant. As your training supervisor, I just oversee your induction and will not be around after this initial week. Some of you may be interested to know that the library is offering specialised training sessions on writing a dissertation. Obviously, this is not relevant to those of you who are undergraduates, it is just for postgraduates. Your department will discuss the planning stage of the dissertation, i.e. what you're going to do with you, and we will focus on the structure of it. However, the training will also include some time on the computers. I realise most of you know how to organise files, but we can show you the different ways to run data programs. Your tutors will tell you at the outset how to set out the chapters they require, but you will need to ask them how they would like you to organise the bibliography because it varies depending on your subject area. When you've got something together, the trainer here will look through the draft version for you to see if it's OK. And one final point, for those of you who have registered from abroad, we can offer individual sessions on dissertations if you feel you need them. If you require language lessons, then they are available from the International Centre next to the Law Department. That is the end of Part 4. You now have one minute to check your answers to Part 4. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.